with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to about what Jesus has done for us. Because baptism is that, that Jesus submerged us in the love of God. And we must therefore open our hearts in this moment to rediscover the richness of God's gift. Christian life, remember, is a gift as the life of Jesus shows us today in the Gospel. And what does Jesus teach us in the Gospel? He teaches us that it is possible to enter the desert without fear, but guided uh, by the Holy Spirit. What is the desert? In Hebrew, the word used is midbar, a place of absence of the world, a place of emptiness without words, a place where we can experience also our enemy, Satan. The desert represented to you and to me difficult situations where survival is put to test. The desert is a symbol of difficulties. Uh, is that area uh, of um, is the symbol of that areas of life where we experience evil, loneliness, death, discouragement, discouragement. It is the place where there are no reference points where there are no roads <laughs> to exit. And in the Old Testament, today the liturgy shows us also another strong image, the image of uh, the flood. The flood is what makes the beauty of creation disappear, what destroys. Some sufferings presented in our lives are like this, are like a flood. They take away the beauty of life. They take away the joy. They bring death and sadness. With these strong images, the Lord tells us today that 
we encounter the desert in our life. We experience floods in our lives. But these things can either be destructive or can be overcome with God's help. For this reason it's important uh, our Christian attitude be before the difficulties. And this Christian attitude makes the difference. Who is a Christian who is baptized or will be baptized or in, on Easter night knows by revelation that evil has a way out. Suffering can contain a meaning. God remember well this thing. God does not leave you in evil. God frees you from evil. He wants, to, you, he wants you to emerge victorious from Satan's attacks. He wants you not to be discouraged, discouraged in face of any flood that may happen in your life. What is the hope that God gives in suffering? And uh, uh, now what help, helps us is the image from the Gospel. Or better, before the image also from the Old Testament, that is the rainbow, okay? The rainbow in the clouds meant a new covenant. God places the bow this instrument of war in the clouds. He does not want to make war anymore, or rather, in his nature, there is no even the, the idea of war. The shape of the rainbow, if you have seen one in your life, in the clouds, is such that the weapon that it represents is towards God. The arrow from the rainbow is aimed towards God, not towards man. God reveals himself as the one who takes evil upon himself to free us, like we see in the cross. He is not angry with you and with me. His covenant is fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the new alliance. He is the sign of the new covenant. He is the rainbow that gives us all, that tells us that the time of separation from God is over, that any storm in your life can have a meaning and an end, a way out. The image from the New Testament, offered by the Gospel, is in the line with uh, what we are saying. Jesus tells us that the desert can be transformed into a garden. How does this transformation happen? Through baptism, the gift you have received. What is baptism? Being born to new life, born in the spirit like a son or daughter of God. Discovering and living in God's love as a child, protected by the Father, supported by the Father. Jesus, in fact, baptized in the Jordan, does not go alone into the desert. He goes with the Spirit. This is the big difference. In fact, in the desert, Jesus manages to stay with the beasts and discovers angels who serve him. This is the image of the messianic era announced by the prophet Isaiah when the bear will eat with the ox, and the child will play near the cobra's den. In fact, when 
Jesus entering the desert, you notice that he stays with the business with the angels. It seems that the brutality of the desert disappears. Today we are here to return to this new reality that the Gospel uh, is announcing to us. We have to return to this new reality that the death and the resurrection of Jesus have acquired to us and bought to us. In the Lord's Easter, the love that conquers sin and death is manifested. The love that comes to dwell in you and binds you in friendship with your Father God is revealed completely in the Easter. It is the love given by Jesus. And remember that Jesus in the cross bowed down his head and gave gave the spirit. It is the love given by Jesus, the love that ha has a name, the Holy Spirit. From this perspective, you can live in the desert with the same spirit of Jesus. Lent is entering in the desert of life without fear, because you are a Christian. You can enter in the desert of life with the essentials. We can experience the moment that is uh, uh, with a strong relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. For this reason, during Lent, the Christian returns to Jesus with all in their heart, nourishing themselves with scriptures, acquiring the new mentality that comes from the Bible. If we do this, if we let ourselves be led by this spirit in the desert, we will experience two consequences. The first, we will live peace in peace even if there are beasts around us. Okay, because sometimes uh, we have no, not human person beside us, but beast. But we can live in peace with them because we have inside of us the Holy Spirit. And uh, the second consequence, that we will discover angels that will help us. A Christian knows for revelation that there are angels that, that are serving to us. But above all, we have people that uh, having Jesus in their hearts are angels to <coughs> us. You are an angel for me. <laughs> and uh, we have to rediscover that and the light from the Holy Spirit, if we are pushed by the Holy Spirit, we recognize that mm, each other are mm, angels. Dear friends, the experience of walking with the Lord does not mean the absence of problems. It does not mean that everything is magically resolved. No. The experience of the Lord allows you to face difficulties not alone, but with the awareness that God never abandons us. In fact, the one who is a Christian has the Spirit who keeps him company, helping him to live through the most difficult situations. The real temptation is to believe ourselves invincible and self-sufficient in a perpetual search for a magical world without struggle and commitment. <clears throat> no, this is the best way to prepare for a fall. The desert, the floods, and the temptation teach us to believe in God's continuous presence by our side and to ask for help from the angels who are our brothers and sisters. So, we are strengthened in trust with temptation, with floods in our lives, with deserts in our lives.
Our victory depends on God and on our brothers and sisters. This is the secret, secret of the outpouring of the Spirit, to become children and brothers who do not become discouraged because we are never alone in the struggle. So concretely, I invite you and me to dedicate the time to know the Holy Spirit and find a moment to share with your brothers and sisters to be helped and to have. Thank mm -hmm. you.